and welcome to Today Matters, our short devotional in the Word of God. My name is Pastor Tony, and I've enjoyed being with you all week talking about what it looks like to have a biblical world view. How do we interact and how do we see God, ourselves, and others? And today we're talking about the world that we live in. How do we see all of that in the framework of God's story? And I want to just repeat the framework with you real quick. And the framework goes like this. It starts with God's creation. God's story starts with God's creation. He creates everything exactly how he wants it to be. He says it is good. Then we have the fall. Things aren't the way they're supposed to be. Things are broken and missing and lacking, and things are just out of place because of the fall. And then at the apex of God's story, we have redemption. We have Jesus on the cross redeeming the world, and at the redemption, things are or the, the solution to all the broken things is given to humanity and to the world. And then we have this period known as the renewal period, or as God is renewing all things through the Holy Spirit, we have this new life happening. And then eventually, in God's story, we have the restoration of all things. Things return back to the way God wants them to be. So today, we're looking with this framework how God wants us to interact with the world. And we're reading out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and here's what it says. We're going to read the whole thing uh, as it finishes in verse 20. It says, So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, and the new is here. All of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting other people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, and though God, as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. I love this last part because this last part, he says, we are now, if, if we accept the fact and we see ourselves the way God sees us and we see ourselves as a new creation and we see others as, as image bearers of God, then it says, ultimately, we are now God's ambassadors. We're his representatives in this crazy world. And as his ambassadors, he is making his appeal to us. Like we go to people who don't know God and we say to them, be reconciled to God. But we first have to see this world the way God sees it. And I want you to think about this. The most famous verse of all, John 3.16, says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever would believe in him, Jesus, should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Listen, I know we live in a crazy time, and I know we look at our culture, and we look at things, and it can literally break our hearts how things are, and, and what it's doing to our culture, to our country, and to our kids, and I totally get that, but if we get so laser focused on all the things that are broken, rather than all the things that are redeemed, and all the things that God wants to do, we will not be effective ambassadors for Jesus. And so as we put it into our framework, if something is broken and it's fallen, it's our job, he says, to implore people to be redeemed, to, to implore situations to be redeemed and watch God make it new. And I love it because here's the thing. What happens a lot of times is we don't actually seek common ground. Like, we don't agree on something, but we struggle often to seek common ground with people when we don't have a common good. And if you look throughout Scripture, and even Jesus' interaction with people and the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, they seek common ground so that they can share the gospel. They may not agree on the good, but as, I, as we seek common ground, we'll be able to share the gospel and implore people, come to God. At that point, once you've said, you need Jesus, man. Jesus has done something special in my life, and what I want you to do is experience it as well, and then invite them to be reconciled to God and come to Jesus. And once you've done that, you can agree to disagree maybe. Maybe they walk away from it. Maybe they're like, no, nah, thanks. But what you've done is you've seen it exactly how God sees it. The way God sees it is I love the world, and I'm sending my son, and here I come, and I'll chase. I'll, I'll knock any wall down. I'll do whatever it takes. And this is the way God sees the world. And aren't you thankful? I know I am. And so how do I have that same view 
of this crazy world that we are living in, knowing that while it breaks our heart, it broke God's heart enough to come and bring the solution, and that solution is Jesus. Man, it has been a joy to share with you guys about what it looks like for us to have a biblical world view. My prayer is that this actually helps you and shapes the way you think about God, the way you think about yourself, the way you think about others, and the way you think about his world. And as we have God's view of all of these things, may he do incredible things in and through the people of God and the people of Skyline. Thank you guys for joining us on Today Matters. Mm -hmm.